Saturday, June the 29th, 2013. Back down on the South Downs to uh, re-video this Glyne to Seaford walk, which is free walk 31. Uh, I did this about three years ago in August 2010, but uh, forgot my handy cam, so I had to do it on the mobile phone. So I thought it felt it was about time I redid this. Uh, let's hope we get a better recording today. We've certainly got similar good weather. A um, bit greyer today though, but the sun's out and uh, it's pleasantly warm, around 20 degrees. And it's forecast to be dry all day, so uh, fingers crossed. Okay, let's uh, get started. About 14 miles to do today, which is um, described as the best walk in book one. That's why I'm re-recording it, because I didn't do it justice last time. Okay, it's around 11.30 now, so let's press on. Almost immediately we pass the Trevor Arms, which uh, features as a lunchtime stop on uh, another glind walk. Extensive garden of the Trevor Arms with its uh, very pleasant backdrop. The footpath to the right just after Trevor Arms is indeed very well disguised. This is it. The alternative is to carry on straight down the road. Very considerate, just prior to the uh, new wooden footbridge by the looks of it. Looks like the football pitch referred to in the text is no more. Yeah, so the uh, farmer has very kindly marked the footpath for you. It's certainly a bit different to the last time I walked this. When I remember uh, works going on down here I believe. Pipe laying, I think it was. What is evident already, amazingly, um, considering the wet spring we had, is that the ground is starting to crack badly. So, who would have guessed that, eh? Point six of the text refers to a style. Clearly those days are long gone now. That field gate is open permanently by the looks of it. Crossing the uh, underpass under the A27, which is now accompanied by a new cycle path since I last came down here. So you cross over the cycle path, go under the um, A27. Plenty of swallows around these barns, as you'd imagine. Haven't been redeveloped, so uh, provide nice nesting sites. Point eight of the text, we're walking alongside the busy A27, uh, along a former road by the looks of it. And then you come out alongside the junction uh, with the road that we left a few moments ago, where the Trevor Arms is. Lots of things go on around this area, Glind, and I know next weekend is going to be busy down here because there's a jazz festival going on all weekend so probably not a good time to do this walk there's another and in left here down towards Preston Court use back to Glind and it's a uh, wind turbine I've uh, just noticed. Well, my favourite mates, just followed me all the way down from the uh, last gate, and there is a bullock in there. No warning of that. Downland views on my right.
as we continue on ahead towards a barn views back towards the downs behind Glind point 12 of the text just reaching the outskirts of Furl with its uh, famous park which I'm just about to pass through information board there for you and it looks like it's closed today not purdy information board but something I'm going to show you in a second yeah there's a wedding going on so uh, closed not to walkers though small uh, Shetland I think it is a bit more placid than the cows I've recently left behind I think this will be about the third or fourth time I've been through this section and I always find it uh, a little bit tricky getting out of this area well the kissing gate seems a lot easier to find this time probably because there's not a festival going on like there was last time I did this made it a bit confusing anyway through the kissing gate and there should be a cricket pitch ahead of me if I remember correctly et voila passing the uh, ram in Okay, here we are at the uh, former reading room, which um, is currently being renovated. And that G up there, so I'm told, is for Gage, not George. So here we are once again in the uh, centre of Westfell Village, with its stores here. House Martin's busy on the post office roof, or eaves of. As before, local produce being sold. And just for the record there, the uh, store shuts at three today. Entering St. Peter's Church with the grounds of and here we have it. Rather pleasant entrance. Interestingly decorated tree in the grounds. Plenty of uh, doves are about. I haven't seen uh, what species they are at the moment, whether they're turtle or collared. Sound like turtle, but uh, it would be nice to see the rarer collared church from another angle isn't that lovely to see it's like they got young already and a neighbour not too far down the eave I wonder if my lens is starting to play up again
not far short of coming out of there. It's only the end of June. Probably get two brood uh, two broods in. To my right, as we leave Fell, following this uh, chalky path or track. The hill to be climbed. Furl Tower over on my left. Get a better view of that shortly from uh, up on a high. The view from point 22 in the text next to the uh, wooden field gate mentioned there. Okay, around halfway up, approaching the uh, 190 meter contour interval. A lovely view this is, eh? Once again, I'm lucky with the weather, as I was last time when I did this walk. But this time, uh, better recording facilities, and hopefully, I'm blocking the wind that uh, interrupted the last recording. That orange feature over there has got to be the uh, venue for the jazz festival I was telling you about at Glyne Place. Point 24 of the text as we approach Furl Beacon, views of New Haven and Seaford over on the right with what appears to be uh, can't be lavender no, it's more likely to be flax isn't it that blue colour As usual up on the downs, pretty breezy, pleasantly so though today. Okay, half past one, lunch has been had from this uh, splendid viewpoint. Just to the uh, west of Furl Beacon over there. Decided not to go up there because it was too exposed so too busy so uh, I've taken my lunch behind these gorse bushes here protecting me from the southwesterly just noticed on my right over there towards New Haven that mass of red poppies what an amazing color that adds to the uh, landscape So that's the blue of the flax and the red of these poppies. I'm at maximum range, hence the uh, shaking. Two one seven trig point at Furl Beacon. Buddingly Reservoir over on my left there. Yeah, I'd definitely say that's flax. Someone was looking at their map up by Furl Beacon. Thought it was a Gregory's Pond. 
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cuckmere Haven and the Seven Sisters in the far distance. The view from Bow Peep car park. Hence the uh, increased numbers around about. Ardenley Reservoir just distant. There you go. Sensible young sheep sheltering from the midday sun. Well, two o'clock sun. Point twenty eight, the four armed footpath marker referred to in the text. Distant views of Cutmere, where we'll be soon. Some wonderful flowers up on the downs, some of them unique to this area. And as we descend, so Cuckmere Haven becomes a bit more visible. So the village of Alfriston comes into view. Lovely setting, eh? Another wonderful view on my right, just outside Alfriston. Following the chalky lane into Alfriston, the slow descent. Alfriston village scene. What is essentially the village square. This is the recommended lunchtime stop, the George Inn. Last time I was down here there was um, some kind of festival going on on the village green here. So uh, nice to get a clear view of it today. So there is the National Trust's Alfriston Clergy House, which I don't think I've previously recorded. And there you have it, the first house purchased by the Trust. Opening hours information for you, if you can read it. Lovely building. There you go, the Church of St Andrew, C of E. Very nice entrance it's got. Not dissimilar to the uh, effect going on at uh, West Furl with the flowers. That's always good to know. Do recall having lunch here previously on that chair 
in August and wasps were coming out of this uh, tomb here. Obviously it's a bit early for them at the moment but uh, yeah, recall that. Talking of lunch, it's about quarter to three at a minute so um, knock off what, 40 minutes for my lunch. You'd be getting here at about three. It's quite a late lunch, the recommended lunch stop. If you start the time I started, which was half eleven. Here are the very pleasant views at the back of the church. What a wonderful setting, eh? We'll be going along that uh, footpath in a moment down by the Cuckmere. Interesting. Obviously when the guttering was replaced as opposed to when the church was built. Crossing over the Kukmir, which no doubt a few months ago was uh, massively flooded. Church and clergy house from another angle. The onward journey. Reed buntings in there. I do believe. I don't think they're warblers. Well hidden, whatever it is. Final views back to uh, Alfriston and its church there. Across these water meadows. As I say, we're no doubt flooded not so long ago. Distant memory now. Absolutely amazing how Mother Nature works. Village of Littlington on my left. If I remember correctly, this uh, was one of the places I had a cuckoo once. Such is the uh, rarity of it these days. On that bend there you can get an idea of how high the water was just a few months back. Massively, uh, what's well, about five, six foot higher. And here we are with the ground cracking. White horse on the hillside over there. Seventeenth century in the plough and harrow, an option for either an early tea stop or a late lunch, whichever. And from another angle, views back over the journey covered thus far towards Alfriston and Littlington in the foreground. Wonderful. Views back to Westfell Beacon, etc. Et Wonderful, eh? So they have a better view of the White Horse on Cradle Hill. Now, Friston Forest. Forty one. Got quite an incline up here, as normal with a valley bottom. That was point forty three, not forty one. I'm now on forty four, walking through Alfriston Forest towards West Dean. Following the path to West Dean, which is also the Vanguard way, I notice, as opposed to the right fork. The cool section of the walk after the uh, exposure up on the hill and also the exposure to come by the coast. Lovely in here. 
Chamber, there you have it. Very pleasantly located church. And just outside the old parsonage. Good solid flint building. Green phone box. Information panel telling us about Friston Forest. Yeah, maybe I should have put one of my posters up here. Thinking about it. Must get some printed. Another incline. One and a half miles to Cuckmere. One and a half back to Littlington. Not a bad little exercise that. Yeah. Information panel about Cuckmere meanders. over Cuckney and Meanders. Shepherd's Hut there. The Shepherd's Hut from an unobstructed view. Been all the mayhem and tourists behind at uh, Exiat Visitor Centre. It's in over Cuckmere from the bridge. Lovely vista back to Friston Forest. And the onward journey ahead towards the Seven Sisters over there. From the Golden Galleon car park. I think I'll take the uh, Riverside route today. Seeing as last time I was here I took the uh, Landwood side. There is the rather commercial Golden Galleon. Now following the National Trust, or entering, sorry, the National Trust's Chington Farm. This dog waste bin's been added since I was last here, I believe. Information panel here about the uh, Cuckmere Valley. Haven, as you'd imagine, quite busy as well. Approaching the Seven Sisters over there. Pastoral sea on the way towards the Vanguard Way route. Skylarks are plenty. have it. Only a few months ago that would have been flooded. Nice to time it so you could actually walk across this haven at some point. Views back again. What a pleasant afternoon it is. So lucky with the weather. Yeah the cattle are lowing. And there they are, or well, some of them. As I say, very busy down here today. Pretty much what you'd expect on a day like today. Well, 
what lovely views, huh? Back up the haven towards Exeat or Exeat. So oh, this is what it's all about. This particular walk anyway. A good shot of the uh, Seven Sisters. From another angle. Certainly looks good in the sun there. Caught it at the right time today. It's an information panel telling us about Hope Gap and its geology and the Seven Sisters from a lower angle. Let's get a great view of the Seven Sisters from the ascent or descent of this particular stretch. Fantastic. Abundance of this lovely purple flower around here. One parting shot. As I say, unlike my last walk, lots of people around today, so can't help but get them in. Approaching the uh, strange communication centre on my right. Information panel here telling us about the Buckle Church borrowers. Leaving Seaford Head and the uh, White Cliffs behind us. As we start to descend, a parting view of the distant downs on the fringes of Seaford there. golf course down on Seaford and beyond and in the distance over there you can see that uh, red poppy field again from another angle Seriously, uh, white cliff, eh? Lots of nesting going on around about, but uh, not here. Now continuing along the Vanguard Way, along the beachfront. Information panels here about the uh, Heritage Trail. And the exercise path again. Today is of course Armed Forces Day so I wonder if this is uh, Seaford's way of remembering it. I know there was a big parade going on in London today but uh, which clashed with gay pride by the way incidentally. But that went down well. Artello Tower which is also the uh, museum still open well it shouldn't be even though it says open on the door it's now 20 past five according to this it shuts at four passing the church which uh, does show the correct time. And from the back, just peeling out half past five. So that makes it what? Half eleven to half five, six hour walk. Not bad. Back at Seaford, as I say, half past five, 
now waiting for the two minutes to six train to get us back to Lewis and then on to uh, East Croydon so um, as I say six hours walking time not bad for 14 miles considering all the stops I made that's the good thing about walking on the downs they're pretty uh, quick walks usually you know, navigation wise they're pretty simple and uh, you have got woods to get lost in anyway that was a lovely walk um, plenty of variety albeit that most of it was on downland uh, there's enough in there with woodland walking and uh, down the cup near Haven to keep most people happy so let's see how this video turns out and hopefully we'll improve on the last one I did three years ago free walk 31 completed once again